Welcome to the online worship service of Beautiful Savior Lutheran in Waukesha, Wisconsin. I'm Peter Schmidt. I have the great privilege of serving as pastor here at Beautiful Savior. I want to thank you very much for making it a priority in your day to spend some time with me worshiping our Lord, listening to his word, coming to him in prayer. I have a question for you. Have you ever had a hard time sleeping? Because, well, there were so many things going on in your life that were causing you worry, stress. Today, as we continue going through the Acts of the Apostles, we're going to hear about Peter, who is going to be put to death the next day. At least that's the plan. And what do we see Peter doing? Sleeping. He's sleeping the night before, no worry whatsoever. Wouldn't it be nice to be able to do that? not worry even if we knew the next day seemed to have some bad things in store for it? Well, today we're going to focus on this wondrous God who comes to us in his love to assure us that all things are indeed in his hands. And if those hands were stretched out on a cross for us, those hands are the best place for us to be. We put ourselves in those hands now as our worship begins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Since we have come to hear God's word and call upon him in prayer and praise, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, In holy baptism, you declared us to be your children and gathered us into your one holy church in which you daily and richly forgive us our sins and grant us new life through your spirit. Be in our midst, enliven our faith, and graciously receive our prayer and praise through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. All glory to our Lord and God For love so deep, so high, so broad The Trinity whom we adore Forever and
first reading today is from 2 Samuel chapter 22. David sang to the Lord the words of this song when the Lord delivered him from the hand of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul. He said, The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock, in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation. He is my stronghold, my refuge, and my savior. From violent people you save me. To the faithful you show yourself faithful. To the blameless you show yourself blameless. To the pure you show yourself pure. But to the devious you show yourself shrewd. You save the humble, but your eyes are on the haughty to bring them low. You, Lord, are my lamp. The Lord turns my darkness into light. With your help, I can advance against a troop. With my God, I can scale a wall. As for God, his way is perfect. The Lord's word is flawless. He shields all who take refuge in him. For who is God besides the Lord? And who is the rock except our God? It is God who arms me with strength and keeps my way Secure. Our second reading is from Acts chapter 12. It was about this time that King Herod arrested some who belonged to the church, intending to persecute them. He had James, the brother of John, put to death with the sword. When he saw that this met with approval among the Jews, he proceeded to seize Peter also. This happened during the festival of unleavened bread. After arresting him, he put him in prison, handing him over to be guarded by four squads of four soldiers each. Herod intended to bring him out for public trial after the Passover. So Peter was kept in prison, but the church was earnestly praying to God for him. The night before Herod was to bring him to trial, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains, and sentries stood guard at the entrance. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared, and a light shone in the cell. He struck Peter on the side and woke him up. Quick, get up, he said, and the chains fell off Peter's wrists. Then the angel said to him, Put on your clothes and sandals, and Peter did so. Wrap your cloak around you and follow me, the angel told him. Peter followed him out of the prison, but he had no idea that what the angel was doing was really happening. He thought he was seeing a vision. They passed the first and second guards and came to the iron gate leading to the city. It opened for them by itself, and they went through it. When they had walked the length of one street, suddenly the angel left him. Then Peter came to himself and said, Now I know without a doubt that the Lord has sent his angel and rescued me from Herod's clutches and from everything the Jewish people were hoping would happen. When this had dawned on him, he went to the house of Mary, the mother of John, also called Mark, where many people had gathered and were praying. Peter knocked at the outer entrance, and a servant girl named Rhoda came to answer the door. When she recognized Peter's voice, she was so overjoyed, she ran back without opening it and exclaimed, Peter is at the door. You're out of your mind, they told her. When she kept insisting that it was so, they said it must be his angel. But Peter kept on knocking, and when they opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. Peter motioned with his hand for them to be quiet and described how the Lord had brought him out of prison. Tell James and the other brothers and sisters about this, he said, and then he left for another place. In the morning, 
There was no small commotion among the soldiers as to what had become of Peter. After Herod had a thorough search made for him and did not find him, he cross-examined the guards and ordered that they be executed. Welcome to Puppet Time with Pastor. I'm here with our good friend Pinky, our praying pig. How you doing today, Pinky? Yeah, not so good, Pastor. Not so good? You're always good. What's wrong? Yeah, I'm having a hard time staying awake. You're having a hard time staying awake? Well, sleep's not a problem, but what do you mean by that? Well, when I say my prayers at night, I start out, Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. And then, I fall asleep. Hmm. Well, that's not a bad prayer. I mean, if you're going to fall asleep, what a great last thought. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. Kind of putting yourself in the Lord's hands. Yeah, I guess so. But I wish I could stay awake a little longer. More stuff to pray about. Yeah, we all have a lot of things to pray about. But you pray other times during the course of the day, don't you? Of course I do. A lot of things to pray about. Mm, what kind of things do you pray about? Mm, first, I give thanks. So many things to give thanks for. There are so many things to give thanks for. It's sometimes we don't even recognize it right away, but great things to give thanks for. What else do you pray about? Mm. Sometimes I do the wrong things, so I ask the Lord for forgiveness. When I'm sorry for them, I ask, Lord, please forgive me. Well, that's a good thing, to confess our sins and to ask the Lord for forgiveness. And so that's a great thing. Uh, what else do you do? Mm. I ask for stuff, not just for me, but for other people. What kind of things do you ask the Lord for? Well... If I know people are in the hospital, or maybe I know that they're just not feeling well or kind of worried about stuff, I ask the Lord to take care of them. Well, do you ask the Lord to take care of you when you're going through some difficult things? Yeah, I do that too. And sometimes I ask the Lord just to, well, to bless us all and to give us peace. That's a great thing because, you know, our world's messed up sometimes, isn't it? Yeah. Too many people shouting at each other and not listening to each other. Certainly not showing love. Sure, certainly is not showing love. Hey, those are great things to pray about. But, you know, this whole idea of you falling asleep at night, now I lay me down to sleep, I pray the Lord my soul to keep. I wonder if, well, that's how Peter... What are you talking about, Pastor? Well, do you remember how he was in prison and... The Bible tells us that, well, the next day he was probably going to be put to death. And he had one soldier on one side chained to him and another soldier on the other side of him chained to him. And yet what happened when the angel came to him, the angel really had to work hard to, to wake him up, didn't he? Yeah, he sure did. He had to shake him and everything. Yeah, he was sound asleep. I wonder why he could sleep so well. Well... Because he was trusting in Jesus. Exactly. He had learned to trust in Jesus. And so he could go to sleep, knowing that everything was going to be okay, even facing death. You know, we heard that marvelous word of David in 2 Samuel 22, verse 33. Do you remember how it said, It is God who arms me with strength and keeps my way secure. King David, who had been a really important warrior, in other words, a good soldier, he knew that his real strength was in the Lord. But some of those battles were pretty scary. Yeah, even like Goliath. But he put his trust in the Lord, and he said, the Lord is the one who arms me with his strength. He'll take care of me. And I think that's probably how Peter felt, and I think that's how you feel too. You know, for all of us, what a great thing to remember that Jesus, the one we pray to in his name, he's always there taking care of us, doing powerful things, just like, well, the angels sprang Peter out of prison. The Lord knows how to take care of us too. And so we can pray and 
fall asleep in Jesus, if you will, knowing everything's going to be okay. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. And this I ask for Jesus' sake. Amen. Indeed, amen. Our worship continues with the hymn. Now the light has gone away Father, listen while I pray Asking you to watch and keep And to say quiet sleep Jesus Savior wash away all that I've done wrong today make me ever more like you and kindest friend You will love me to the end Let me love you more and more Always better than before There are certain commercials that I've seen in my life that continue to go with me. I've never forgotten them. Even some when I was as young as four years old. I'd like to share with you a video of a public service announcement that came out in 1967. I still vividly remember it because it made such an impact on me. Let's watch it now. Like father, like son. So at the end of that video, you see the father and son both sitting underneath a tree, which reminds me of that saying, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. In other words, how our parents are, and maybe even our grandparents, 
how our family's been through the ages, well, we maybe have the tendency to continue to walk that way, live that way. I might even say, for me, as a child of Adam, it's kind of been that way since the Garden of Eden. Adam and Eve were by a tree. They had a decision to make, if you will. Am I going to listen to God's word or not? And, well, when they didn't listen to God's word, things changed dramatically. And from that point on, generation upon generation has been plagued with what we call original sin. So we are born with this tendency not to do the right thing, not to ask God, what do you want me to do? but to be very self-centered and to think what's in it for me. So we heard about King Herod in our reading from Acts today, how he put James to death, wanted to put Peter to death. This is not the same Herod that was alive when Jesus was born, the one who had those babies, boys, two years and under, put to death in the Bethlehem vicinity. That was Herod the Great. Herod the Great was, well, a great builder, but he was also very paranoid and ruthless. Putting people to death was not an issue for him. Neither was it for the next generation of Herods, because there was another Herod who was alive when John the Baptist was alive, and, well, this Herod put John to death, and he was also there when Jesus was put to death. And the Herod we have in the reading from Acts today is third generation of the house of Herod. And obviously this Herod, too, is ruthless. Do you remember what we heard from Acts chapter 12? It was about this time that King Herod arrested some who belonged to the church, intending to persecute them. He had James, the brother of John, put to death with the sword. When he saw that this met with approval among the Jews, he proceeded to seize Peter also. This happened during the festival of unleavened bread. Have you ever found yourself in a situation where you're kind of just following the way things have always been, maybe in your family for generations, and you want to break out. You know, here's the good news that we have in the scriptures. Jesus changes everything. Jesus makes it possible for us to break out of that rut of being self-centered, only concerned about ourselves, sometimes getting very angry about things and violent. Jesus changes everything. You know whose life we see that in, in the scriptures we see it in Peter's life. Do you remember Peter? Remember how in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus was praying, and Peter, his closest disciple perhaps, fell asleep. Jesus had said, watch and pray, but Peter, along with James and John, couldn't keep their eyes open. Jesus comes to them and says, look, the spirit's willing, but the flesh is weak. Couldn't you watch with me for an hour? Watch and pray. Well, things didn't get any better for Peter, did they, that night? So after Jesus was arrested and taken away, remember how Peter and John made their way to the high priest's house? And Peter was warming himself in the courtyard. And before the rooster crowed, he denied he even knew Jesus three times. Jesus had told him it would happen. Peter said, that's not going to happen, but it did. Do you imagine what kind of a failure he felt like? Do you remember... Peter on Easter going to the grave with John after Mary Magdalene had said, the grave's empty, and they go and they look, and then they kind of leave in bewilderment, even though Jesus had said, on the third day, I will rise. Peter was not perfect, was he? And I'm sure there were times where Peter kind of beat himself up, often like maybe you and I do, Because we want to do the things God wants us to do, but we end up doing just the opposite. Just like Adam and Eve back at the tree. So we find ourselves in the same rut of sin, but Jesus changes everything. Think about Peter again. The Peter who fell asleep in the garden. Remember what we heard in Acts chapter 12? The night before, Herod 
was to bring him to trial, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains, and sentries stood guard at the entrance. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared, and a light shone in the cell. He struck Peter on the side and woke him up. How in the world can Peter sleep through that? Think about it. The next day could possibly be his last day on the earth. He was going to possibly be put to death, just like James, the brother of John, was. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, the fishermen, along with Peter. Peter had to be thinking about that, but here he is sound asleep. And please understand what the picture is, because Herod wanted to make sure that Peter would not get out of prison. And so he had this detachment of guards, and there would be four guards at one time, four hours for each round of guards. So one guard would be chained to his right, one guard would be chained to his left, and here's Peter between them. Then there would be guards outside of the cell, and here's Peter sound asleep. Why could he sleep like that? Why could Peter sleep like this? Because Jesus changes everything. You will recall that Peter, when he woke up, the angel shaking him, thought this was like a vision. He got up, the chains fell off of him, the angel instructs him to dress himself, put his sandals on, and then they leave the cell. And no one moves except Peter and the angel. They even get out this big iron gate, which by itself opened. And they go about a street's length, and then all of a sudden the angel's gone, and Peter realized, wow, this actually happened. We pick it up in Acts 12. Then Peter came to himself and said, Now I know without a doubt that the Lord has sent his angel and rescued me from Herod's clutches and from everything the Jewish people were hoping could happen. Now let me just stop there and when we hear in these translations Jewish people, keep in mind that what Luke is talking about is the Jewish religious and political leaders. Because after all, James, who had been put to death, was Jewish. Peter, who was about to be put to death, or so he thought, but now is rescued, is Jewish. Most of the early Christian church at this point is still Jewish. So we're talking about the Jewish political and religious leaders. Well, we go on. When this had dawned on him, he went to the house of Mary, the mother of John, also called Mark, where many people had gathered and were praying. I wonder what they were praying for. Were they praying that Peter would be released? Were they praying that he would have strength and endurance, knowing what was coming up, what had happened to James? But they were praying. Well, I have a couple of questions for you. Question number one is this. Have you ever experienced being reassured by God? This is what's going on here for Peter, isn't it? He's being reassured that this God whom he put his trust in is real, is right there with him. If you ever had a time like that where God had something happen in your life that was just kind of like an eye-opener, oh yeah, Lord, you are working through all things for the good of those who love you, and I love you, Lord. Thank you for doing that. But how about this question? Is it possible to miss God's reassurance? In other words, God is answering prayers. God is doing powerful things. God is reassuring you that he is real right there, but somehow you miss it. Is it possible to miss it? I think so, because that's what we kind of see happening. Remember how Peter went to the door, and he's knocking on it. Well, let's pick it up and hear what happened. When Rhoda, the servant girl, recognized Peter's voice, she was so overjoyed, she ran back without opening the door and exclaimed, Peter is at the door. You're out of your mind, they told her. When she kept insisting that it was so, they said it must be his angel. 
But Peter kept on knocking. And when they opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. Peter motioned with his hand for them to be quiet and described how the Lord had brought him out of prison. Tell James and the other brothers and sisters about this, he said. And then he left for another place. When you think about that, this is kind of a a humorous picture in the scriptures. Here's Peter knocking at the door. Rhoda recognizes his voice, doesn't open the door, goes upstairs, tells the people they won't believe it. Peter's still knocking. Will you let me in? Finally, they come and wow. It really is true. It's Peter. He's alive. You know, one thing that we're seeing through the Acts of the Apostles is the importance now of prayer in the life of the church. Prayer is an amazing gift that God has given us. You know, when you look at the Gospel accounts, you see Jesus praying all the time. There, of course, is that account we heard earlier with Peter, James, and John not being able to pray with Jesus, falling asleep instead of watching and praying. But Jesus was praying. We pick it up in Luke chapter 22, beginning at verse 39. Jesus went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. And when he came to the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not enter into temptation. And he withdrew from them about a stone's throw and knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. And there appeared to him an angel from heaven, strengthening him. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. What an amazing picture of our Lord praying. Now notice how it says, as was his custom. Now some might think that was just talking about during this last week here, this holy week, how he would go to the Mount of Olives at night. But the question is, what would he always do there? The Lord was in the habit of praying. The disciples saw that. They even asked him at one point, Lord, teach us how to pray. And so here's his custom, and he's telling the disciples, you pray too. But notice how Jesus is praying. Notice he says, Father, if it's your will, take this cup away from me. But not what I want, what you want. If you ever had a time where you have been praying with that kind of agony, and you've been maybe even frustrated at the point of maybe giving up, wondering if this even works, because you've been so disappointed before that your prayer wasn't answered. Think about this. We have this picture of our Lord, who the night before he was going to be crucified, is praying to his Father, asking if it's your will, take this away from me, And yet, he puts it into his father's hands. And there is where he finds the peace. There is where he finds the confidence that his father won't forsake him. You see, Peter was there along with James and John. James had been put to death. Peter looked like he was about to be put to death. Yet here he is sleeping. Why could he do that so soundly? because he had learned about the power of prayer. Now, I know that when prayers aren't answered, at least the way we think they should be, it's difficult for us. And there are times where we want to just give up on God and say, is this even worth it? But which way do you want to go? Do you want to go that way under the tree where generation upon generation takes things into their own hands? Or do you want to go back to the tree of the cross and see how the Father answered the prayer for you? That he was willing to give his Son for you, for me, for the whole world so that we might have forgiveness of sins and have eternal life and be his children, knowing that confidently 
that where we go, our Lord goes right there with us, and he knows how to spring us out of our prisons too, just as he took care of Peter. Now, why God answers some things some ways and some things another way, I don't know. Why James died but Peter was sprung from prison at this point, I don't know. But what I do know is when I sit under that tree of the cross, I have a Lord who knows how to take care of me because he's willing to die for me. And he rose victorious and he poured out his spirit on Pentecost. And he knows how to go with us, just like David said in those powerful words from 2 Samuel 22. Remember these words? It is God who arms me with strength and keeps my way secure. And so we come to him in prayer under the tree of the cross, saying, this is the way I want to go, following you with your strength. You give me peace. And there are going to be times where we struggle. And there are going to be times where, Lord, why? Why is this happening? And there are going to be times when we pray, Lord, in my understanding of things, this is what I'm praying for. This is why I'm asking it. But ultimately, we come back under that tree and say, but Lord, your will be done. Your will be done. Just as my Lord Jesus asked for that, and it was done for me, that I might be the forgiven, redeemed child of God. So I'm praying for that in my life, and you won't disappoint me. You will give me your strength. So I can even fall asleep in prayer. In the midst of all the challenges of this life, when it seems like everything is just going apart, I'm with you. Under that tree of the cross, walking in your ways. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. And Jesus answers, yes, I do that. I'll go with you, even through the valley of the shadow of death, and get you right where I want you to be, where I've always wanted you to be where you are now with me and someday with me for all eternity. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the gift of divine peace and of pardon with all our heart and with all our mind. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the holy Christian church here and scattered throughout all the world and for the proclamation of the gospel and the calling of all to faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for this nation, for our cities and communities, and for the common welfare of us all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for seasonable weather and for the fruitfulness of the earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for those who labor for those whose work is difficult or dangerous, and for all who travel, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all those in need, for the hungry and homeless, for the widowed and orphaned, and for all those in prison, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, 
have mercy. For those facing surgery and those recovering, for all going through treatment for disease, for all trapped by addiction and anxiety, for all walking through the valley of the shadow of death, for all health care workers and caregivers, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. Finally, for these and for all our needs of body and soul, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I want to thank you so very, very much for joining me for our online worship service from Beautiful Savior. A reminder, if you're in the Waukesha area and would love to worship with us, we'd love to have you here. So our in-person worship times are Thursday evening at 6.30 and then Sunday morning at 8 and 10 a.m. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord always look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. Amen. God be with you. Have an excellent rest of the day.